Hello, this is Scott Dahman of PowerWorld Corporation. In this session, we will be demonstrating the Simulator SimAuto COM Automation Server. SimAuto allows PowerWorld Simulator to be controlled from an external application. The Simulator Type Library may be referenced into an external programming environment, and then Simulator's properties and functions can be accessed from that programming environment. Here we see a couple examples of how SimAuto can be used to automate an analysis process. For example, you could use Visual Basic for applications in Microsoft Excel or Access to pass information into Simulator, perform some analysis, such as solving an optimal power flow, and then write the results back into a database. You could also use an external program to perform a unit commitment function, such as calculating generator parameters over time, and then solving a sequence of hourly power flows in Simulator. SimAuto can be used with just about any programming environment that allows you to reference an external type library. The first step is to make sure that you reference the Simulator type library from your external programming environment. A lot of times this will be handled automatically when you install Simulator and when you run Simulator, but you might need to check in your programming environment to make sure that the type library is available. Then within your program, you issue uh, commands to connect to the SimAuto automation server. Once a connection is established, then you can interface with the simulator using several SimAuto functions that are listed here. In this session, we will demonstrate an application written on the Microsoft Excel Visual Basic for Applications platform that allows the user to perform several different functions, such as solving an optimal power flow, scaling the case, and writing records back out to the Excel spreadsheet. So we'll open the Excel application, and then we'll have to make sure that we enable the macros if we're prompted to do so. And from there, we'll open a form in the Excel application to control the other functions in Simulator. In Microsoft Excel, I will open the workbook Example Sim Auto VB02. Depending on your settings in Excel, you might need to enable the macros in order for the function to work properly. From here, click the Run Main Form button, and this form will allow us to perform several functions through SimAuto. You might need to change the path listed in this directory box to point to where you have the example case b7flat.pwb stored. Each of the buttons on this form then has code associated with it that allows us to interact with Simulator in some ways. So for example, I could open the connection, then open the case B7 flat, retrieve some generator parameters, which are then echoed in this window here. solve the, an optimal power flow, and I can see that the locational marginal price parameters have been sent back to the application through this window here. I could send the generator information into my Excel sheet. The result here are the generator records with the fields which looks a lot like it does if you manually copy and paste out of the Model Explorer into Excel. There's also a button in the application for scaling the power flow case, which takes all the loads in the case and scales them by a factor of 0.9. I could then resolve the OPF, and so forth. 
At the conclusion of the demo, I could then close the PowerFlow case, then close the connection to same auto, and quit the form. In this example, and in other Microsoft-based applications, we can view the code by going to the Tools menu in Excel, then clicking Macro, and then opening the Visual Basic Editor. I can browse the code that's associated with each of the uh, buttons on the form, different subroutines here. Uh, from this drop-down up here, for example, I could choose the OPF button and view the code that's associated with it. This code uses SimAuto's list of devices function to obtain a list of all the generators in the case. Then, down here, it loops through each generator and sets each generator's AGC field to yes. Next, it changes all the areas in the case to be on OPF control. Then, it issues script commands to change into the power flow mode, solve the power flow, solve the optimal power flow, or the primal LP, and then solve the security constrained optimal power flow. Next, it retrieves the bus records for the locational marginal price and sends them back to the window. This code also includes a public declaration at the top of the object called MySimAuto as a simulator auto object. This allows the other functions to reference MySimAuto to call the SimAuto functions. So for example, if I come down to a particular subroutine and start to edit it by typing in MySimAuto and then a dot, then the application, the uh, Visual Basic environment then gives me a list of all the different methods and properties that I can access for the MySim Auto object. I can also look at these in the Visual Basic environment by opening the object browser. If I choose the library, Power World, I can see that I have a couple different classes here. The SimAuto 11.0 is the current one. Then on the right, I can view the different functions, methods, and properties of the class. So for example, ch the change parameters function has three different arguments as listed down here. An explanation of some of these functions is shown later on the slides, and also a complete help reference is available within Simulator's help, which I'll demonstrate later in this session. From here, we can also check the list of external references that are available to Visual Basic and verify that the PowerWorld Simulator type library is referenced. If this is not checked, you might be able to find it located in the list of available references as well. Normally when you install Simulator and then each time you start Simulator, the type library will be referenced. If you have different versions of Simulator on your machine that you occasionally run, normally what happens is the last version of Simulator that you launch will be referenced in the, the uh, list of available references. You can verify just which application is being referenced down here with the location. So the functions are all available within the executable powerworld.exe. 
If you do occasionally access different versions of Simulator on your machine, then it's usually a good idea to first launch the version of Simulator that you want to use with SimAuto and then close it prior to launching your SimAuto application. The example we just demonstrated and several others may be downloaded from our website. And of course within the Excel environment you can access the code using this method right here. The commands that are issued to simulator as we've seen in the OPF example are identical to those used in the script language. Simulator objects and data fields are accessed using the same variables as used in the data section of the script files. The next few slides explain some common SimAuto functions. The change parameter single element function has three arguments as described here. The object type is a string such as bus. You can get a complete list of the object types by exporting to either a text file or Excel from the help section within Simulator. The parameter list is a variant array of strings that include the simulator object fields that you wish to reference, such as the bus number. Within the list, the primary key for the object type must be included. Values is also a variant array that includes the values that you wish to change. So for example, if you wanted to change a generator's AGC status, you could pass in the parameters for the bus number, the generator ID, and the AGCable field, and then set the values to yes or no using the values array. The function returns any errors that occur in executing the function. If no errors occur, then the return value will be an empty string. A related function is the change parameters multiple element. The difference here between the change parameters single element function is that the value list can be a variant array storing arrays of variants so that you can have multiple elements being passed in one function call. Here is some sample code for the change parameters multiple element. This could be used to change the area name for multiple buses. The object type here is bus. The parameter list is the array of strings with the fields bus num and area name. And then the value list is an array that has two different elements in this dimension and then two different elements in this dimension. So here bus number one is assigned to the area named right and bus number two is assigned to the area named left. Another related function is change parameters multiple element flat input. Here the difference is that the value list is a single dimensional variant array where all the parameters for all of the objects are just listed sequentially in one array instead of separately in an array of arrays. The get parameters family of functions, which includes get parameters single element, is similar in structure, except this can be used to just retrieve the values out of simulator and then return them into your application. The output returned by get parameters is then arranged in a couple different dimensions here. The output zero in the first dimension is simply the error string 
which will be a null string if there are no errors in executing the function. Output 1 is then an array of the results that are returned from simulator. So for example, if you used get parameter single element to retrieve the generation that is present at bus number one in a function that looks like this, output zero would include the error string. Output one zero would be the bus number. Output one one would be the generator megawatts at that bus which then corresponds to the second field in the parameter array. Get parameters multiple element is similar except instead of retrieving the parameters for a single object like a single bus, you can retrieve all of the buses The output returned then becomes a set of nested arrays containing the parameter values for the device type requested, and the number of arrays returned depends on the number of fields in the parameter list. So now the output has three different dimensions. Here's a similar example as the one that we looked at for the get parameter single element except for now we're returning the variable bus gen megawatts for all of the buses. So here are how the results break out into the, the third dimension. The bus number for the first bus shows up in output 1, 0, 0. The 0 here corresponding to the first element in this array. Then the second bus is stored in output 101, the bus number that is. And then the next field is the generator megawatts, and that shows up in output 11, with the next field referring to the first bus, the second bus, and so on. You can also use the get parameters multiple element flat output to return the results in a single dimensional array. In this case, the array that's returned includes the error string, the number of objects returned, the number of fields per object, and then the values of the fields themselves. So you would have to parse the results that come back in this array in order to to then figure out which one is which. The following slides describe a few other sim auto functions, such as the get field list, which returns all the fields associated with the given object type. list of devices, which returns the key fields for all of the objects of a certain type that meet an optional filter. Here's the structure of the output returned by list of devices. And then also using the function list of devices flat output, you can return the results in a single dimensional array. In PowerWorld Simulator, you can open the help file to get a complete reference of all the SimAuto functions. From the help contents tab, you can browse down to the PowerWorld Simulator add-on tools and then open the Simulator Automation Server, SimAuto.
A list of the functions is then available under Simulator Automation Server Functions. So for example, I could look up Change Parameters Multiple Element. and then get a list of the different arguments in a description here. For functions that have more complicated output structures, such as get parameters multiple element, I can see a graphical representation of the output in multiple dimensions. A lot of these functions also have sample code available. There's also a reference for the different properties available in SimAuto. So here's a heading for the simulator automation server functions. And then if I scroll down, I can see that there's also a heading for the simulator automation server properties. And if you open that, then you can see a list of the properties. Simulator also includes a reference for all of the object types and all of the fields available in Simulator. If I click on the window ribbon, I can choose export case object fields either to a text file or to Excel. If I click on the send to Excel option, and if I already have a, a Excel workbook open, I have the option to create a new workbook or send the results to a workbook that's already open. In this case, I'll choose to send the results to a new work workbook. And then in Excel, I can see all of the different object types in Simulator, such as three winding transformers, areas, area contingency reserve bids, and so on. So for example, I could look at buses using the find feature in Excel here. And then I can see all of the variable types available for buses. These are the variable names that you would reference in the parameter array for the SimAuto functions. This concludes this topic on the PowerWorld Simulator SimAuto Automation Server. If you need further assistance, please feel free to look us up on the web, give us a call, send email to our support line, or if you prefer to work with a particular PowerWorld engineer, please feel free to contact that person directly.